So let's look at our micro lesson for this week, which is how to create a villain that readers love. Um, this is an exercise in character creation and like all of the exercises or the, the suggestions that, that I come up with, please don't feel, if you feel that you don't want to do this with a particular character, then don't do it. You know, this is just for when you feel like, yes, okay, I've got a villain. I'd like to make this villain more than um, one or even two dimensional. I'd like to make this a villain that I can, that I know that readers will care about. And one of the examples that I think of is um, in one of the Guardians of the Galaxy, which are such fun stories and very often with great emotional depth to them. And the one with Chris Pratt, where he loses his mother in the beginning and then he walks out of the hospital and he is kidnapped by space bandits right it sounds ridiculous but it it totally works and the space bandit who kidnaps him is an evil man who raises him and is his father so there's a very deep and meaningful um, relationship that they have so the father who kidnaps him is a great example of a villain that you love and you get so engaged as he's doing the bad things later on they when they are you know they're against each other his, the father becomes the main character's opponent you just really you're so torn because this man has raised Chris Pratt and been a, a father to him and now they're they're going at it hammer and tongs so it's very very engaging and that's the opportunity that we're talking about tonight so the first step is to know who your main character is so um, when you have a main character in your story you know that you're going to have um, one of the primary types of conflict is another person who's going to get in their way and so what to make this more engaging, what you would be looking for is a villain who is not just opposing your character generally, but is opposing them specifically. So an example of that would be, you know, perhaps you have a high school kid and there's a teacher who is a tyrant. So if that teacher is a tyrant generally and a tyrant to every kid, then yes, they're a villain, but they can be a much better villain if they are specifically going after your main character. So an example of that would be um, perhaps your main character is a fantastic singer and perhaps the music teacher is a, you know, someone who had dreams of being a star and it didn't work out and so they're embittered and so every time they see your main character their buttons are pressed because they're jealous of that main character's talent you know so they are specifically against your main character because the main character is they're jealous you know so that's how to make it a specific villain for your main character so step one is get your main character know what they're about and then step two is create your villain in opposition to them um, so what we're going to do tonight um, if you have a villain then just get that villain in mind if you don't have a villain then we can create one so I'll give you a few minutes if you'd like to get a, a blank page or open up a new screen um, you can call it villain um, and then the first thing to write down is the answer to this question who is the main character what is their goal what is your main character's goal so um, you know perhaps it's a a character who is um, you know we we have one of one of you is writing about um, a streamer so so that would be your main character um, and her goal is to get oh, to keep her view, viewership rising um, and so that's really important to her and so a specific villain would be someone who was trying to directly stop her doing that so perhaps a villain who um, wants to be a streamer herself and wants to sabotage your main character's job because they want that job 
or perhaps they're already a streamer and perhaps they know that in a month or two or the next day or that afternoon they're both going to the same location and the villain doesn't want your main character taking her views you know just I'm just spitballing what it could be so once you know who your main character is and what they're trying to achieve then we come up with the villain so just think about a name and an age for your villain and write that down and what is it that your villain wants that is directly in opposition to your main character so using the example of a high school teacher um, you know if this high school teacher is a tyrant generally someone who's just really mean to the kids then that's their you know they're cranky so that's one of their main character traits and then a secondary character trait could be that they are embittered because they wanted to be a soprano at the Met Opera and your main character has a beautiful soprano voice. You know, that, that would be beginning to get specific about how the villain is in opposition to your main character. So write any notes that you have about what else you can think about your villain and why are they getting in the way of your main character. I'll give you just a moment to do that. And then um, I'm going to upload a PDF in just a moment. And in the PDF, there are two links to um, two websites to that might be helpful um, if you are struggling to find a villain and if if this fits for you you could come up with um, a mother who is a villain so you could either use your own mother if she qualifies or you could use um, a mother from you know the idea of a mother from literature or from a book or perhaps a friend's mother um, you know, someone who did something that in your main character's view was a very unmotherly or a bad motherly thing to do. Um, so that's another option for a villain. And once you've got some broad strokes about what your, your villain wants and why they're directly opposing your main character, then we can move on to the second part about how we create empathy for this villain. So in order to create empathy for the villain, first of all, as the author, you need to develop that empathy for yourself. Um, if this is a character that you really hate in real life and you don't want to create empathy for them, then don't, you know, pick a different character. Pick, pick a different villain that you feel you can create empathy for. Um, so the first thing, let's say we've got a villain and we do want to create empathy for them. The first thing to do is to write a list of painful things that have happened to your villain. So if we take the example of the music teacher who is embittered, um, we could write out a list of things that happened to them as a child. Perhaps they had um, a parent who was a star in the opera world, or they had a parent who scrimped and saved to afford lessons for them. Um, and perhaps they got to the, I don't know if this is a thing, but like the third round of interviews at the Met Opera and they got so close and then they were pipped at the post by someone who reminds them of your main character or perhaps you know if this is not a high school situation perhaps they were actually pipped at the post by your main character that would be even better um, and so you know if their parent who had spent their nest egg on trying to turn them into this <coughs> trying to excuse me <coughs> trying to give them this opportunity um, and then your main character was the cause um, of them not being able to achieve that, 
um, that would be something that was very painful to them. <coughs> Excuse me. And then what happened to them as a teenager or an older person? What struggles have they had in their life that either is to do with their disappointed dreams, the reason that they're embittered, or just general things, you know? Um, did they have someone, a partner that they hoped they would, maybe they want to get married, you know, maybe they just wanted to get together with this person and, and it didn't happen, um, and perhaps it didn't happen in a horrible way, you know, if they were betrayed, if they were, um, or there's so many terrible things that can happen, right? So just come up with a list and keep writing a list of what terrible things happened to them and the details of those terrible things until you notice that you have empathy for them. Once you notice you've got empathy for them, then you can pause and you can go to the next step, which is a more subtle way um, to continue creating empathy and turning them into a fully fleshed out character. So the second way to do this, the first way is to write the list of the bad things that happens to them. And the second thing is to schedule some worry time for them. So let's say we've got our evil music teacher, our evil orchestra leader, um, choral leader, and you've given that person a name and you've given them a rough age. So imagine them, they've gone home, they're on their own, they are so fed up and they are going to sit down and they're going to journal the things they worry about because they just had it. They're at the point where they have to do something because they feel so bad. So they, they get out a journal, they get a fresh piece of paper and they're going to write down all the worries that they have. So take a few minutes now just to write a list of worries for this villain. What is your villain worried about? Are they worried about their dog who has been to the vet and got a prognosis of some terrible thing or their cat got lost, which is a terrible thing if you've ever, if you've got indoor cats and they get out, it's just awful. Um, so what are their worries? You know, do they think they're going to be let go? Do they think that their parents are not well? You know, what are all the things that they're worried about? And again, you just keep writing until you have enough of a list of those more subtle things in the present day that they're worried about. So I'll give you a few minutes to do that. Big things and little things. And of course they don't care, they're journaling, so they don't care about whole sentences. You know, their writing can be very staccato, it can be notes. Would they swear? Would they, how much frustration would they express? Just write down everything that comes to you. And then you can always come back to this, of course, things will hit you afterwards, you know, you'll be thinking about that character and you'll be thinking about all the things that are bothering them. And if they're a solution oriented person, they might spend some of this journal time trying to come up with answers to their worries. And if you want to give them a moment's respite, if you've engendered enough compassion for them, that you want to give them a break, maybe they tell themselves that it's okay, you know, some things, it be like that sometimes, sometimes you can't, you can't do anything about it, maybe they make themselves feel better in their journaling, um, and maybe they don't, you know, maybe they 
have a, a journal time and they write, just write themselves into a frenzy and get paralyzed by fear or panic or go off the deep end or lash out at the nearest person, either in word or deed. You, you are the God in your world, so you can decide. And so basically, once you, as the writer, once you feel empathy for them, once you understand the causes of their behavior, you'll be able to include that in your story and you'll be able to show the reader the forces that made that person who they are. And the reader will feel the pain of the villain even as your villain acts out and makes things hard for your character.